welcome to Journey Church Online. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. I hope that this is a meaningful experience for you. You know, at the Journey, we're all about relationships, not religion. And what we mean by that is that you can get a religious experience anywhere, or you can do just religious things. But we want to connect in a real relationship with God. So if you're exploring God, or if you're looking to experience more of God in your life, I hope this is a great experience for you. Especially if you're a guest with us today. If you're a guest, if you're kind of new to the journey or you've been participating with Church Online for a little bit but haven't yet, I encourage you to fill out a guest card. We won't harass you, but we want to do whatever we can to encourage you to experience more of God in your life. So if you fill out that guest card, we'll have a free gift for you and we'll just follow up with you one time. So we're glad that you're with us today. You know, there's all kinds of th stuff coming up in this next month if you're local. And I want to just encourage you, one of the things we talk about is that we're better together. And so if you're local, and, and I want to encourage you to maybe jump back in. We have fall kickoff things going. We have lots of new opportunities this month. And so you can find all those details right on our website. If you go to the event page or to our blog, you'll find all those details. You'll find the guest card there as well and, and the connect card. And you can use that connect card if you have any prayer requests or if you need assistance of any kind or information, just use that connect card right there on our blog. Well, today we're going to be getting a new series. It's called Bigger, and we're talking about being part of something bigger than yourself. And so we're going to be talking all about owning and living out the mission that God has for us. And so we want to begin then today by worshiping God. And we do that in a few ways, but worship is, is really about honoring God with our life and everything that we are. And so we worship God through giving, and I wanted to say thanks for all that of you that give. We, we trust God with our finances. We say, this is part of my life and I'm trusting you with that. I'm gonna honor you with that. So we worship through giving. If you wanna give today, you can do that right on the donate page of our website, but there's no pressure to do that. We worship God also through music and the band's gonna lead us in just a minute in that. And we worship God with our life by, by offering ourselves to him. And we're gonna be hearing throughout this series about how we can be part of something bigger to honor God with our life, to live out his mission. So let's begin today by pushing all the distractions of me, what's going on this week and back to school and all those things. Let's push all those distractions aside and let's worship God with everything that we are, whether it's our finances, whether that's with our songs, what we sing and music, whether it's with our life, whether it's with our focus, let's worship him today.
Are you ready to be part of something bigger? Oh yeah, I'm already pumped! That's not exactly what we're talking about. Awesome, thank you. Gonna get supersized. Uh, no. The bigger the better! Yeah! Hey everybody, I'm Paul. I'm one of the pastors here at The Journey, and I'm so glad that you're with us for a brand new series that we're calling Bigger. And, and it's fall kickoff week. Uh, I, I love this week, the week after Labor Day, the week when everybody's back in school, the, the week when the NFL starts. There's something about fall kickoff, the back in the rhythm, and I, I love summer, but there's something about getting back in that rhythm, and I'm an optimist at heart, and so there's this kind of anticipation of what could be in the year ahead and the truth is I think we all need a fall kickoff we need we need a jump start I, I wonder if 10 or 20 years from now we're gonna look back at this last 18 to 24 months starting in March 2020 and it'll feel like a big giant pause button has been hit on our life and on our world like like everything just kind of went like okay what's happening what are we doing and is there any forward movement at all and for many of us man we just need that jump start we've gotten out of rhythm and some of that's been good some of that's been bad right like there's been maybe some new habits and you kind of looked at life and thought man why were we living that way like we need to we need to put some emphasis or energy here and again some's been good some's been bad i mean it's amazing to see how many people around the united states have, have just moved right they're like you know what why are we living in san francisco when we can get three times the house in arizona for half the price 
Why, why are we commuting 30, 45 minutes, an hour into work and then back again when, when we can work from home most of the time and have the flexibility to be at our kids' games? And, and so many people have lost weight, so many people have gained weight just because they've gotten into new or worse rhythms. Uh, I think we need a jump start. We, we, we need to get back into a rhythm into a way of doing life, because life just got disrupted in a significant way. For most of us, there is a danger that has been in this season that we've been in, uh, a danger towards isolation, a danger towards self-focus. Uh, it, it's maybe a new rhythm that is unhealthy. And certainly there's some good things with that, right? Like we really look out for our family, Maybe you've had family connections in a way that you never had before because you're just checking in on each other. Uh, and so that's been, that's been good. Maybe you were saving money because you're just like, man, life feels so uncertain. And I think we need to kind of rein in our spending and we need to save some money and kind of hold on to that for whatever comes in the future. It's actually been a, a good thing. But so much of that is, is not healthy for us, right? We, we isolate. We're not as connected. We look inward and are self-focused. We've got our little circle, our little pod. And, and, and the thing is that that has just never been the way of Jesus. Right? I mean, you look at the life of Jesus and the mission of Jesus over these 2,000 years, and he, he's always calling us to look outward, not inward. And no, no matter what's going on in life, right? Whether it's um, a country in collapse, whether it's a um, economic downturn, whether there's a pandemic, whether people are being persecuted, like no matter what it was, Jesus is always inviting us to look outward, never to be focused just solely inward. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about being part of something bigger than yourself. And it's really about this outward focused living. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than the journey. It's bigger than Sunday's. You were meant to live a life that's bigger than you, that's others-focused. So unapologetically over these next weeks, we're going to be challenging you, each one of us, to step out of our 18-month slumber and step back into the life and the mission and the purpose that God has called each one of us to. Listen, this season has been hard, and I'm, I'm with you. There's been a lot of times when I've, I've struggled um, maybe more than more than ever before. Again, I'm typically an optimistic person, but it's been a, a hard season. There's been times when I, I've just been totally unsure what to do, what to do um, as I lead others, what to do as I lead my family. Um, and, and then there's been times when I felt like I, I've known what to do, but is it really going to matter anyway, right? Like, one is, will anybody follow if I'm having to lead something? Or, or, or just like in our own world and home, like, it, does it really matter? Like, can, can we really accomplish anything? Anyway, Jennifer and I had this um, date jar that we had planned right before COVID. And we put these different things in. We wrote down what we were going to do. And, and we went to pull those out there during COVID. It was like, oh, we can't do that. 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 And that's just felt like so much of life. Like, is it really going to matter? And it just feels, again, like, Man, this big giant pause button has been hit on our life. But we can't live on pause. Right? We can't live on pause forever. And certainly we can't live on pause if we want to live the life that God has for us. It's hard to live with purpose when you're on pause. And so we want to jump start ourselves once again. And I'm guessing you felt some of that over this last season. And maybe you'd say, I'm, I'm still on pause. Well, we want to help us get some forward movement again. You know, and the thing is, we're not the only ones that have ever felt this. It's not just a COVID pandemic thing. Jesus' disciples, I'm thinking they felt this to the core of who they were. I think they felt like a big giant pause button had been hit on their life that they were discouraged, that they were unsure what to do, and that even if they felt like they knew what to do, they were sure it wouldn't matter anyway. They had been with Jesus and had seen him and walked with him, and they had this picture 
of his kingdom and how this was all going to play out, that he was leading this revolution and into this new kingdom, but it didn't happen the way they thought it was going to happen, and instead their leader, Jesus, was executed. And when he died, I think the dream died with so many of them as well. And it's like, pause. <laughs> what happened? Like, what are we going to do with our life now? But then Jesus rises from the dead. He, he meets with his disciples and he begins to share with them. And, and for the first time, maybe things begin to unlock and the dots begin to connect in their life about what this kingdom is and how it is different than what they thought. But it's so much better and bigger than they could have ever imagined. And, and they get invited in to Jesus to be a part of that something bigger, a life centered on him and his mission and purposes. I want to look in Acts chapter 1. Uh, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are biographies of Jesus' life. Acts is the fifth book, and it's the beginning of the movement of this early church and kind of the spread of this message and mission of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 3, the resurrected Jesus meets with his disciples. Acts 1, verse 3 says this, After his suffering, he presented himself to them, and he gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and he spoke about the kingdom of God. And so he gives all these convincing proofs. He's around them. It's not just like one time, like they all hallucinated. Like he's around them consistently. He's talking about this kingdom and now they're kind of getting it for the first time. But now they want to like, okay, so when's this kingdom going to happen? When's it going to happen? Verse six, it says this. Then they gathered around and they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. What Jesus tells them is basically, Don't worry about when. Instead, this is what I want you to focus on. Right? Like, I'm inviting you into something bigger. You're going to receive power from God through his Holy Spirit. You're going to have God's power. And because of that, you're going to be on mission. I've got a purpose for you. That's something bigger for you. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to help people find and follow me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's, it's like a, a pebble that he threw into a pond, and you see these ripples go out. It's Jerusalem, the city where they lived. Judea, their own countrymen, Samaria, the people that they were enemies with or they didn't like, that were outsiders, and even to the end of the earth. He says, I want you to be part of something bigger. Matter of fact, I want you to be part of a worldwide movement. Bigger than your circle, bigger than your bank account, bigger than your one week of vacation, bigger, bigger than mask or no mask, bigger than political parties. What? Like we're, <laughs> right? Like it's bigger than all of that. And then Jesus disappears. Poof. Like, you're like, good luck, luck, luck. Like, he's, see ya. Like, you got this power of God with you, mission I've given to you. And he invites him to live on purpose, for a purpose, with intentionality. This is his invite to us, too, to you as well, to live a life on purpose, for a purpose, with intentionality. Uh, to Spread kindness and share hope, how we talk about it at the journey, uh, wherever you work, live, and play to impact the lives of others with the message of Jesus, with the hope of Jesus and the life and the freedom and the peace that he offers. And this was his plan for them and for us, but it wasn't meant to be done just alone, right? We, we are meant to do this together with the power of God with us, but we weren't meant to do it on our own. And so we get to Acts chapter 2. And Acts chapter 2, coming right after Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2 is kind of the birth of this early church and the movement and the, the mission of Jesus. It's kind of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. It's not, sometimes when people read Acts chapter 2, especially towards the end, which we're going to read in just a moment, they idealize it. Like, man, if only we could be like that. But it was a totally different context and culture, right? I mean, they were... Um, uh, an agricultural society. They walked from place to place. It was close confines. It was just a whole different world. But I want you to 
hear this, and then I want to talk about kind of the, the overarching principle that we should get from this passage. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. They, this early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those being saved. They were together. But it wasn't about just uh, they were eating and fellowshipping together and praying together and uh, giving to those who had need. I mean, all of that is great. The purpose, though, was that they had a common mission. Right? They, they, they loved well. They served well. They were looking to meet the interest of others. They were focused on Jesus. They were caring about the good of those around them, but it was this common mission that was pushing them forward. They, they weren't all exactly the same. They didn't all have all the same interests, but they had this common mission. And, and because of that common mission, because of the way they lived outward focused, they had favor of all the people, which is incredible. And every day people were coming to find and follow Jesus. Day after day, this team approach to living, this team approach to purpose was impacting the lives of others. And every day, people were finding and following Jesus. They were part of something bigger than themselves, and they were part of something bigger than themselves together. And, and together, the impact was exponential. Well, it is the NFL kickoff this weekend, and I'm a diehard Detroit Lion fan, for, for good or for bad. Mostly for bad. <laughs> In fact, I'm wearing my Compassion International shirt today, Hope for everyone, because this is how kind of everybody feels about their NFL team at the beginning of the year. Like, maybe this year. Uh, and I've felt that way about the Lions all the time. Like, maybe this year they'll finally, not, I'm not even hoping for the playoffs or Super Bowl. Like, maybe this year they'll start to turn things around. They can head towards being a good team. Well, even if you're, you're not a Lions fan um, or a football fan, um, but you've been in Michigan for a while, you probably know that the Lions have a quarterback, had a quarterback named Matthew Stafford. He, he's been the Lions quarterback for 12 years. And he got traded this offseason to the Los Angeles Rams. Now, in Michigan, what I find is there's people who love Matthew Stafford and people who hate Matthew Stafford. Uh, people who think he's a terrible quarterback, he's just not good enough, um, because if he was good enough, he would have led them to the playoffs, they would have won some games, and because he didn't, he's not a great quarterback. Others feel like Matthew Stafford's a great quarterback, but he's been on the Lions. <laughs> right? So he's had nobody around him. And when he goes to Los Angeles, they're sure he's going to win the Super Bowl. And these people are like, when he goes to Los Angeles, it's going to be the same old, same old. I, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I do know that teams win in football. Individuals don't. You might win a game or two, but you're never going to win a championship unless you've got a team. And there's 11 people on defense, 11 people on offense, 11 people on special teams, and they've got to be moving together. That's, that's the best teams. Those are the teams that, that win. Um, I don't know if I've got any Western Michigan Bronco alums that are watching, but a few years ago, they had a coach, P.J. Fleck. He's now the coach at the University of Minnesota. And P.J. Fleck kind of rallied the Western Michigan football team around. They had their best years ever, but rallied them around a motto, row the boat. Like everything was row the boat, row the boat, row the boat, but the picture was that if they were all rowing the boat in unison, if they would all get in and they'd all grab the oar and they'd all row in unison, they'd be able to go farther, faster. They'd be able to go in the same direction. They'd be able to go where they hadn't gone before and that's really a picture of Acts chapter 2. It was this common mission where they're all rowing the boat together. We're in on mission together. We have differences. We're not the same, but we're going to row the boat together. Impact the lives of others together. And when we live that way, the impact can be exponential. Now, one of the ways that we're going to be doing that this year, and there's a whole bunch of different 
ways that we're going to be trying to live this out together. But one of the ways is through what we call partnership. Partnership is a way for you to say, I, I want to get in and row the boat. I, I want to be in and play my part on this mission. And in the past, that's what we've done. We've done partnership, and it was kind of a self-reflective moment to say, I'm in. Uh, some churches would call this membership. Um, but we've never had membership of the journey because we've never been about member rights and voting privileges and things like that. It's been like, hey, are you, are you in on the mission? But this year, we want to we raise the bar. We want to take it up a level. And so we're going to be having uh, these team partnership nights. Uh, it will have a team box with some resources, with some swag, with some challenges, with some things to encourage, inspire, and challenge you to kind of live out this mission together. We're going to be gathering together to do that. And all throughout the year, we're going to have this focus and this challenge for one another. It's a way for you to take another step in your relationship with Jesus and in the lives of other people and to get in the boat and to, to row it with us. Man, we would love for you to partner with us, to be a part of all of that. Um, that first team night is going to be September 19. And you might not be able to make it to that first night. You can still be a partner. Uh, a partner is for those who are following Jesus. If you're exploring Jesus, if you're just kind of checking things out, this is a great place to do that. We want to encourage you to keep doing that. If you're somebody who's already decided to follow Jesus, we want to encourage you to think about being a partner with us. Uh, again, September 19 is that first team night. If you can make it to that, that would be awesome. Um, and, and we'll get you the team box if you can't. We'll make sure that you kind of understand where we're headed to sign up to be a partner. You can simply go to our blog online. So go to our website or use the QR code that you got today. And, and go to our blog, and there's a short little form to fill out to say, yeah, I want to be in on being a partner. We really feel like this can help propel all of us forward, really impact others, and help us move from self-focused living to out, outward-focused, others-centered living as well. And when we do that together, when we all row the boat together, again, the impact can be exponential. Another way you might want to take a step in that way is through volunteering, through, through serving somewhere here at the journey. The truth is, there's still a lot of people who are unsure about coming back to church. Um, maybe they just got a rhythm. For some, um, there's some autoimmune issues. For others, they're just like, man, we're not, we're not coming back until our kid is vaccinated. And so there's some, some gaps in our volunteering. And, and we're not looking for that, so we need you. But we're not looking for that just so that um, we fill up our slots for a program. But because everything that we do here at The Journey is designed for the outsider to come in and be connected, to experience Jesus, to experience his grace and mercy and love, whether they're the littlest journeyer or the oldest journeyer. And so each role that you play as a volunteer is helping that person take another step in and experience the same maybe grace and mercy that you've experienced in your own life. It's one way for us to move from inward to outward focus and along the way you get to meet a bunch of other people who are all rowing the boat and that will help you to move forward in your life as well listen we, we were meant to be part of something bigger bigger than you and that happens when we live a life on purpose for a purpose with intentionality when we do it with others not just on our own under god's spirit his power <laughs> thank goodness it's with his power in acts chapter 1 verse 15 after Jesus has talked to his disciples and talked about the kingdom, they say, hey, when's the kingdom coming? He says, don't worry about that. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, Peter gathered kind of everybody together, and he speaks to them. And it says this in Acts 1, 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, and it says in parenthesis, a group numbering about 120. And then just a couple chapters later, Acts chapter 4, Peter and John have just spoken to a crowd of people about Jesus, about life with him, and um, the mission and the, the message of Jesus and how they could find hope and life in him and who Jesus was. And they get a, basically arrested by the religious leaders, the same ones who had Jesus put to death. And I'm sure they're thinking, like, this is it, like this is over. Well, they don't put them to death. They scold them, they beat them, but they don't put them to death. But it says this after Peter gives this message. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. But many who heard the message believed. And so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. And that's just men. So they think it was probably 10 to 15,000 with men, women, and children. They went from 120 
to almost 15,000 in short order. How? The power of God working together, a life on purpose for a purpose, and the world has never been the same. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So over the next weeks, we're going to continue to talk about what it means to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, and how we're going to live this out together. But this is what each one of us needs for our good and for the good of our community. It's what we were made for. It's what can break you out of an inward, self-focused life. You were meant to be part of something bigger. And when we live this way, he can change our world just like he did 2,000 years ago. So, so practically speaking, as we wrap up, what's one thing you can do this week to live with intentionality towards God's purposes and mission? What's one thing you can do this week to live with intentionality towards God's purposes and mission? Maybe it's to step into serving. Maybe it's to sign up for partnership. Maybe it's to get to know a couple of your neighbors that you haven't got to know yet with the express intention and goal of spreading kindness and sharing hope. What's one step you can take towards living with intentionality on, on purpose, for a purpose, with intentionality? And then secondly, what's one step you can take to be around others who are on mission, others who are rowing the boat? And maybe it's to plug into a journey group or a network team. Maybe it's to be consistent on Sundays. Maybe it's to invest in a few other people that you know are in and say, hey, let's encourage each other and hold each other accountable. What's one step you can take, one step you can take to be around others who are on mission, others who are rowing the boat? And what's one step you can take to, with intentionality, lean into God's purposes? Let, let's, let's each move forward in this. Let's, let's hit the pause button and, and restart life once again because you were made to be a part of something bigger. Let's pray. God, I pray that you would help us. Where we have been self-focused, would you help us to be others-focused? When we have went inward, God, would you help us to look outward? Would you help us to be a part of something bigger than ourselves? Would you help us to live with intentionality on purpose for a purpose? Would you help us to live with others that we would play our part in rowing the boat in your mission and what you called us to, that others might experience your hope and life and freedom? We know our world, our community, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our classmates, they need it just as we do. So God, I pray that you would help us as a church in this community, at both of our locations, online. God, I pray that you would help us to move forward, to, to, to get off of pause, to re-engage, and to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And that, that you would do even what you did 2,000 years ago and you would begin to change the world around us because of the way we live. That we'd have the favor of all the people and daily people would come to know you. God, may it be so. Would you help us be part of something bigger? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks, Paul, for sharing with us today. There was a challenge here at the end that Paul gave to us about connecting with some other people, joining our lives together because we're better together and find other people that are also on mission for God and, and being connected with them. And I, and I hope one way you can do that is just be consistent here with us with the Church Online experience. We're joining together right now to bring our focus together to encourage and motivate each other. But if you're local, I want to encourage you to maybe consider some other opportunities that we have, that we have coming up. And you can find all those details on our website with the event page or on the blog. Uh, the Next Step Center, any of those places, you'll find multiple options. Even in, if you look in the description today, there's some first steps and some next steps, some next steps for you to consider to be part of this mission, be part of something bigger than yourself. So check those things out and, and find maybe one step that you can take to join in with some others and to own and live out his mission, to be part of something bigger than yourself. One, and, and again, all, if you want to find some things that if you're local, you can find all those details right on our blog or the event page. Well, one of the things you also find on the blog is stuff about our journey kids. So you can find all the resources you need if you're a parent. And I want to encourage you right now to pull the kids together 
and do Sundays at home to continue to build a foundation in their life. And this week, I want to encourage you to keep taking steps to follow Jesus, to spread kindness, to share hope, and remember we're better together. And I hope to see you back here next Sunday for week two of Be Part of Something Bigger.